think what I want to talk about first is how you became involved in this project. Great. Do you, I'm not going to act. Do you mind? I'm just going to that talk to you like I'm absolutely talking. perfect. Fantastic. Please do. Um, I went up to... Ruben and I were making Cairo Time about mm -hmm. three years ago. And um, during the making of that, I think she had already made written a movie that she was hoping I was going to do for her, which was uniquely different to the one we were making in Cairo Time. Um, if you think of maybe Cairo Time perhaps as a sort of... At the time, it was a sort of feminine fantasy. You know, there was a sort of woman of a certain age or uh, with a certain amount of experience, age doesn't come into it, um, who is in a really stable relationship with her husband, but is allowed to have a fantasy about loving someone else. And so that was a very female, uniquely female experience, very uniquely female fantasy, and I played that role. She had a very male fantasy based on her own father, um, who would lose his daughter and how strong and tough and big and yeah, like that, 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 he would become and go and sort it out, which is also a daughter's fantasy. Um, so uh, she'd written, written the same sort of thing from the s opposite side of the coin, mm -hmm. um, a, diff a, a different kind of mythological, I suppose, sort of almost, uh, I was going to say, Jungian experience, Joseph Campbell, if not. Um, so there's a, that, that was, I was very interested, and by that time I really loved Ruba, I was really enjoying mm -hmm. working with her, mm -hmm. and she's, as you know, because you've probably met her. She's such a delightful person. Mm. As a, but she's very human, obviously. Human. And, uh, and quite ageless. So I uh, said, of course, it would be great, let's mm. do it. I'm not believing you would ever do it, obviously, because anyone make, you want to make an independent movie, mm. it's not a hammer. <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> Look forward to it. Look forward to it. That must be something you get to say all the time. All oh, absolutely. The time. You call me anytime. Any time. We'll just we'll do the thing. The uh, thing. That's exactly. Time. We'll yeah. just do it. We'll just do it. It'll Fantastic. Be cool. Yeah. I think three years ago I was involved. I was uh, attached to nine different movies. We didn't make. We made one of them. <laughs> it's like on IMDb where they say rumored. That's. I yeah. know exactly. <laughs> that is, yeah. So, she and Danny Iron, who is. A bit of a genius mm -hmm. at raising money, a bit of a magician actually. Um, I think he won Producer of the Year in Canada this year for very good reason because he can pull rabbits out of hats. Um, finally got it together after a couple of false starts, and uh, once we got it, to, we lost a chunk of money. Mm -hmm. I think it's only like you lose ten grand making an independent feature film, mm -hmm. and the whole thing falls to pieces. It's true. Um, and we lost something like twenty, you know, twenty thirty grand, and the whole thing just went. Ruben was already in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So I decided in, South, in Egypt to make this film three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't know anything about it. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, you know, interesting that you mentioned about um, Ruba having a very female fantasy with Cairo time yeah. and a very sort of male yeah. fantasy yeah. for this. Um, I, it is an action film, or like a political thriller, mm. that is directed and written by a woman. Mm. And um, that was very interesting to me, because while um, I can see that there would be... It's sort of like Taken, yeah. with no yeah. boat scene, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, and it, and it has a lot more, it has a lot more heart than, than something like, say, Taken yeah, did, which yeah. has a very male perspective on it. It's very and brutal. It's, I mean, it's like extremely, uh, relentlessly male. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was wondering if um, working with Ruba on that type of film, you know, and having her, did, did her gender play any role in that? Did you did you feel she really brought something extra to it, or yeah. or was it exactly the same as working with anyone else? No, it was absolutely different, completely unique working with Ruba, and for very good reason. And, and specifically her gender, she's unashamedly feminine. Mm -hmm. In a time where we are, the line between feminism and the old school 70s militant feminism and the, the, the new generation of youngsters, 15, 16, my son's age, uh, who are rebelliously unfeminist, worryingly for our parents, it's like, wait a minute, come on, surely you don't just want to stay at home and cook. <laughs> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a minute, everybody went through all that hell in the 70s for you guys. She has found a way of being spectacularly feminine uh, in a really good role modeling way and smart and able and capable of doing things in a, what is a very male world. Mm -hmm. This is, doesn't get more male, iconic, iconic male than this. <laughs> and so I think um, that was very exciting to me because politically that's, and sociologically and just personally, 
that was, a, uh, was like, yes, you are qualified to talk mm -hmm. about this. Because you'll bring something different. Mm -hmm. Michael Mann will do his thing. Mm -hmm. Love that. Mm -hmm. And you will do whatever that is that you do. And I want to see what that is. And she did it. And I didn't know at the time, because at the time, obviously, we were filming. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's like 20 hours in the gym every day. Mm -hmm. It's relentlessly uh, 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 exhausting. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I saw it the day before yesterday, apart from the fact that I was in it every goddamn minute, <laughs> which you can't, it's like difficult, you know, it's like it's looking at photos of yourself. Who <laughs> likes to look at fucking photographs of themselves? <laughs> Nobody does. And I don't like seeing movies of myself. I'd rather see someone else. Much more interesting. But anyway, I was in this, so I had to. But I did get a chance after the movie finished the next couple of hours talking to my agent who saw it with me. I had a nice little screening, just three of us. Um, it became clear that there was something else happening in the film. It was an action film. It's a formula film. Mm -hmm. uh, not an action film, but an action thriller. Mm -hmm. Whatever they genres. Yes. Uh, but it had space, mm -hmm. which most, mm, dare I say it, male directors don't, wouldn't dream mm -hmm. of letting happen. But also Ruby's unique in the sense that she, no one bosses her around. There is nobody who tells her how to shoot her film. That's great. And in the second movie, that's an achievement. Mm -hmm. She has Danny barking like a dog behind her, mm -hmm. making sure anybody who wants to fuck with her is, has to stay the hell away. That's great. So she's like, I want it yellow. And Danny's going, it's going to be yellow. Oh, and everybody fantastic. has to pack up shop <laughs> and do it yellow. And that kind of power is attributable to her charm. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's very charming. So uh, I think she did pull off, uh, I, did, I think she did pull, pull it off. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure because I, again I was all over it but I think she pulled it off and I think she <laughs> did brought something different to an old formula mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it's really I love old I love going to a movie knowing mm -hmm. what I'm going to see totally you know. there's something very comforting about exactly. that exactly it's like going yeah. to a bar and going I want a gin and tonic mm -hmm. okay gin and tonic doable yeah. I don't like going to a bar and going just give me whatever you want <laughs> which is what you, the ex which I like sometimes because that's the experience of going to art films it's sure. like I don't know what it's going to be <laughs> let's go <laughs> Ten minutes late. <laughs> okay. So I, 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 the fact that she's muscling her way into the, the old school territory of formula movies, which puts her up against Taken. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, puts her up against those audiences, mm -hmm. and they're going to criticise her for that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to people like, "Well, it's not as good as Taken." And that's like, oh, "Well, fine, we're ready for that. Mm, yeah. We're ready." Yeah, I we're think, okay. I think not as good is um, just such a harsh. It's sort of like it's just such a harsh thing to say because they're not the same. I know they're just they're so not. Even I know, the but same. people aren't critics. <laughs> you true. are. Uh, it's you true. will think out of the box, <sighs> but people just go, no, not as good. That is true. That Thanks. is definitely true. Well, I thought it was definitely as good as taken. Well, In fact, I like it more. Uh, which I mean, the reason I asked the gender question is because I sort of came out and I thought, all right, I remember what I thought of Cairo Time, which I, I adored Cairo Time. Yeah, it was a, it was from beginning to end. It was a delight. Um, and so when I came out of this, I thought to myself, now. Here's an inside job. This is a woman who has made an action movie that I can love. And I guess that this is kind of what it's like when I go see Taken with my husband. My husband comes out and he's like, this is awesome. Yeah. And <laughs> and I'm like, well, I enjoyed myself, but, you know, I mean, there were a lot of uh, cracked out girls and the, yes. you know, and I... <laughs> Tits everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, but yes, Liam Neeson kicked ass. Yes. Uh, however, so I, you know, it really, to me, it felt like an inside job. I enjoyed that Good. quite a lot. It really did. Good. Um, and what I really liked was there was, um, when you talk about that space, there was a lot of space and time yeah. for you as a character, um, as a father and as yeah. a person to sort of ponder what the circumstances around him, the fact that he was back in his homeland, this is a person who's been very divided his whole life, not really here, but not completely there. Um, and so I'm wondering about, you know, where did you pull that from? What, what, what was your process in terms of bringing out the elements of him? It was really, it was really difficult and really easy at the same time. It was really difficult on the level that there was an actual civil war evolving in yeah. Syria while we were filming it, which we didn't know when we started the process sure. of getting it together. Sure. It was a, just Syria was like, man, there's Syria. And then when we actually got the money and we were like going, Syria had kicked off and it became a crucible of, you know, all sorts of disgusting things happening in Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very informative of how we shot the film, the tone of the film. We'd sort of made a similar kind of film, I think. Mm -hmm. We'd sort of attempted to try and swim with the sharks in, in, the, in the formula territory, mm -hmm. um, because we thought we had a right to be there. But we didn't 
we wouldn't have done it the same way. We, we, we would have been, maybe we would have been a bit more fast and loose with the action elements, um, a little bit more glamorized in elements. Mm -hmm. But when that happened, we had to assume that somebody from that country would see our film in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Probably a bootleg, because that's how a whole Arab world sees those films. And uh, they would f they would fall for because the, they love this in the Arab world. They love seeing films that have guns. <laughs> they'd fall for the poster, they'd buy the thing, and one of them would leave it on, and the mum could come in, and the mum had lost a son in Syria that week or right. week before. Sure. And how is she going to feel? Right. about seeing this film. Right. It, it, it really was that basic. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, are we gonna... Do we, is she gonna feel raped? Mm -hmm. Is sure. it her experience? Yeah. What's happened to her? Losing her children or her country or whatever it might be. Is she gonna feel like we have taken that and made a lot of money out of it? And um, that was really important, obviously, mm -hmm. for us not to do. So that affected the tone of the film. It was, And that's what was hard. It was easy, because once we got that down, mm -hmm. Ruba could just let go. It's sure. like, right, you're going to be as real as we can make you. We're going to make you intimidatingly male. Mm -hmm. We want men who come in there to have to, you're going to set a bar for them about yeah. how goddamn male you are. <laughs> and uh, after that, it's up to you. And I was like, oh my God, all right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Is that male enough? <laughs> Give me a fucking gun now. <laughs> um... So, in fact, it's misleading this poster because we don't actually get a gun until I find someone else's gun. Yeah, I take it moment, and actually, we lose it. Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> the dude is so unmasculine in terms of classic stereotypes. Mm -hmm. um, but he is quite male because the Arab man is quintessentially that the one in her head, her father, mm -hmm. whoever she keeps conjuring, is a very male, masculine figure. Mm -hmm. um, really because of his honesty and, ca and ability, volatility, mm -hmm. capable of being very brutal. Mm -hmm. Um, but in a kind of way that I suppose even I, and in the politically correct world, would really like my dad to be if I was a kid. I mean, that's, uh, I want him to be that, like that. <laughs> if something happens, you want him to come he's, and get he's you. He's the guy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But at the same time, I really enjoyed that there wasn't really, there was never a moment where you completely lost control. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. you were always very, uh, the, the, the moment with, um, the journalist, yeah. when you are essentially simply threatening him yeah. by remaining in the room, yeah. uh, was was such a powerful thing, and I, I found that that was. It, it, I had some questions about politics, and some of, some of which you've answered, but it, you know. The thing I like the most about this film is that it's very politically motivated in that there's a lot of politics happening, yeah. but it really, it's got one singular purpose. It doesn't get into the mess of the politics. The politics are simply around. Yeah. And so I, I thought that the, the action in the film informed those politics more than if you had done, if everything was expository dialogue yeah. about the politics in Syria. Um, and so that scene in particular, where, yeah. you know, the strength is in just staying in the room, that's so dangerous, just to be there. Yeah. Uh, I found that extremely powerful and Absolutely. fantastic. I so, remember that. You know, and even the child coming up and him like, yeah. is he going to hit the kid? Yeah. No, okay, right yeah. back. Exactly. I remember yeah. thinking that when the kid came up to me in the room. <laughs> It went through my head. I would hit her, and I just went, "Wait a minute, yeah, yeah, back, yeah, focus, yeah." yeah. <laughs> this guy. So I think that's informed by the fact that I have one key thing to do. And the moment I lose control, I lose my daughter. Right. Because I have always got to be thinking one step ahead. The character had to think one step ahead. What is going to happen next? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, the last question I have is just about, you know, you've worked with a Canadian director yeah. twice, um, yeah. but you've had a very long career, and yeah. you've worked with many different directors. Yeah. Is there anything different about working with a Canadian director? Intrinsically? Yeah. It, racially? <laughs> <laughs> Other than that. Well, you know, ca Canadians are lovely. <laughs> Hello. You know, they wait until the, the white man appears on the thing, and then they cross the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's an element of Ruba that's that's Ruba's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a, a human being first. She's not pretending to be uh, a director. She's she's a director, but I mean she's not pretending to be a human being, but a director. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of, she's actually a human being first. And I think that must be informed by her upbringing. Sure. I think she's come up and been brought up in a humanitarian environment. Mm -hmm. And I think Canada is very much a humanitarian place, you know, a place with a conscience about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would say that that is very much. She's not a practicing enigmatic like the British like to be when they're, they're, they're down and then riddle me this and I'll tell you this and try it like this. <laughs> She's like very straight, 
um, which so that cancels out. There is a uniqueness about the Canadian aspect, mm -hmm. and I think that's probably just an honest human being arriving in the room. Um, I'm sure that has something to do about the environment she was brought up in, and that's the only way I can attribute Canada to it. Anything else is racist. <laughs>